environmental crime is the fourth largest crime in the world. We are talking about $290 billion per year. The use of exotic animals in popular culture by the celebrities we know and love is nothing new. But sometimes athletes and artists take it a step further, taking these animals in as their own and making them pets as if they were dogs or house cats. Like Sway Lee and his pet monkey, Quavo claimed to have bought a pet tiger, NBA Youngboy apparently has some cubs, and of course Tyga and his tiger. While they are undeniably cute, the ethics of owning an exotic animal are questionable. Behind the cool Instagram photos are wild animals that experts say aren't meant to be raised in your living room. And in certain states, like California, it's a crime to own these exotic pets. Authorities monitor social media accounts and will confiscate the animals if need be. When these animals are abandoned or taken by authorities, two things can happen. They're either killed or if they're lucky, they'll be sent to an animal sanctuary like Animal Tracks Inc. that are licensed to care for them. Come on, let's go see some things that might terrify you. All right, let's Come do on it. in. One of the things we do at Animal Tracks oh, is God. try to work on people's fears. So right now, I, I have, will not touch that, I'm sorry. No, I'm not gonna ask you to. And so this beautiful young lady is magical. I won't get close to you, okay? Yeah, I'm sorry. It's Irma from Burma. He's now 14 feet, and he still has a good 10, 12 feet to go. Do, do you, you know? Do you wanna wear him? I would love to not do that. Okay. Um, All right, let's go meet some more stuff. I feel All like. All right, Speedy, this is Monzo. Monzo was cracking. African an African serval. We're gonna bring him out some food, some goodies. I'm actually not scared of this animal because I've met a serval once and he was nice. It feels just like the other serval that I touched. It's because I kind of look like Tony the Tiger today. You kind of do. And I it was gonna cool say we you. were maybe cousins. Uh -huh. I don't know what's happening. So I'm not an animal guy, admittedly, but these are some of the cutest animals I've ever seen. Oh, shit. All right, Speedy, this is Chrissy. Now, this is a baboon. Yes, this is a baboon. And baboons, suitable as pets? Not no. suitable as pets. <laughs> no, very not suitable. Said, they like to clean. Nobody taught her to do that. It just wiped down the counter. Yes, that she was... did. Oh my God. That's just the natural thing? It's just natural. They just clean. Your job here at Animal Tracks is what? To house these animals or to rehabilitate them and then bring them back into the wild? So what we do is we get the animals that cannot be rehabilitated and we give them a forever home. That's our specific job. Got it. And then we educate the public with them, including giving them a great life. What exactly is categorized as an exotic animal? Anything that's not a dog, cat, bunny, hamster, rabbit. That's it? Yeah, Just those in California, five. yes. Now there's lots of states where you can have lots of animals. But what happens with those animals is they face a really high death rate. Um, when you get a baby monkey, if you feed them cow's milk, it can kill them. They're lactose intolerant. So how many people did their research and fed them the right thing? But I see a lot of celebrities mm -hmm. um, who like to have exotic pets, be it artists and musicians or athletes or entertainers. Why do you think celebrities as a whole are drawn to exotic animals? I think because people love, they love animals. I love animals, crazy for them. But um, most of the time it's an impulse buy. For a celebrity, it's kind of easy to do. They have the money, it's very expensive. Um, so you can afford to go get that exotic animal. You can afford the housing for it. Um, but there's not always the education behind it. But then there's people who, I don't know what I name names, but get a monkey in Germany and really don't know what they're in for. So I think there's this um, notion that people think any animal could be domesticated if they just get it early, you know, if they get it as a baby and raise it in a home. Is that true? Oh, that, that is cool? a misconception. Instinct, you can't breed out. I, I mean, let's look at this. Everybody wants a dire wolf right now because of Game of Thrones. A wolf hybrid knows where your jugular vein is located. And when the animal gets angry, it's not going to snap at you. It's going to go for your throat. It will be an infant and it will be a baby with you but eventually it will turn into the animal it's supposed to be. Where do they come from? A lot of them are rescues from people who have them as pets, is that right? Yes, so pet trade, huge. We have emus that someone was breeding, alligators found in people's bathtubs. We get them from all different places, confiscation. So let me just tell you, if you go get a monkey and you put it on social media, Fish and Game just sits in their little office and watches on their computer, marks down your address, and they knock on your door. 
So Fish and Game is low-key the cops of this exotic. They, are. they carry guns and they don't mess around. Tiger's tiger was confiscated after it was found confined to a dog shed at a friend's house. The rapper reportedly gave him up in fear of getting caught for having the tiger illegally. An investigation into the trafficking of exotic animals also led to a raid at the Encino home of hip-hop producer Molly Mall. Per the LA Times, the fish and wildlife investigators seized a tamarind monkey and African serval. Uh, for example, I wanted to show you those two orangutans. Andrea Crosta is a conservation and international security expert. He's basically like an Italian James Bond who works with former intelligence spies to orchestrate sophisticated operations to stop the illicit animal traders and turn them over to international officials. They got them from the wild uh, in Indonesia to get orangutans, baby orangutans, you have to kill the mother, 100%, and probably other orangutan. But you have to imagine this little orangutan really attached, physically attached to the mother. Mm -hmm. So you have to kill the mother and then get the baby. And then those two orangutans have been smuggled from Indonesia uh, through Malaysia into Thailand. And then my team intercepted the traffickers, so then passed the information to the police, and the police seized the baby orangutans and arrested the, 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 the traffickers. Their destiny is to be sold in Thailand to an international dealer and then disappear into the illegal trade of pets. How does an animal get smuggled into the U.S. and then somehow permeate and find its way into somebody's home, like a monkey per se. Everything starts in the jungle of the Central or Latin American country. It can be Brazil, for example. Usually, uh, traders place orders among you know, local communities. Usually the local trader, let's say a Brazilian trader, is works together with uh, people specializing in smuggling all kind of stuff out of the country into the United States. Uh, then to, 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 um, to get on a flight, uh, you usually drag the monkey uh, because the monkey needs to remain silent and not moving. So you, you drag them and, and many monkeys, of course, die because of that for overdose. Uh, you keep it very close to your body. Sometimes you, you, know, you use a bandage and, and bags and stuff to put it very close to your body so you can pass uh, security, and and then when you get to the United States, uh, there are usually someone at the receiving end of the supply chain getting the animal, revive him uh, if he's still alive, and then put him on the market. It's incredible. Every kind of object actually that you can empty. If you can empty the object, you can fill it. So behind this uh, funny picture of you on Instagram with the monkey here. Sometimes there's a very, very tragic story, but not just that. You, by buying these animals, you are actually giving money to very bad people. And sometimes these people reinvest money from wildlife into human smuggling or narco-trafficking. So essentially, by participating in the illegal exotic animal trade, you could be funding other illegal activity. And for drug cartels, it's a low-risk, high-reward situation. Criminals apprehended on charges of drug trafficking can receive years in prison and millions of dollars in forfeiture. Wildlife traffickers, though, are typically only fined. Uh, the environmental crime is the fourth largest crime in the world. We're talking about $290 billion per year. Within minutes of searching Facebook and other social media platforms, we were able to find countless illegal animals for sale. Uh, most of these people post everything on Facebook like, uh, you know, they're not afraid. If you're willing to pay anywhere from $200 to $1,000, you could get a pet tiger with just the click of a button. In Texas, it's easier to own a tiger than a dog that's been labeled as dangerous. It's estimated there could be roughly 2,000 to 5,000 tigers living in this southern state of the U.S., meaning Texas could have more tigers than tigers living in the wild globally. Tell me how you feel when you see people post monkeys and, um, I don't know, illegal birds or things like that on Instagram. So they, these famous people, in my opinion, have an incredible responsibility. If they use their status to send good messages, they can really help. Uh, but having, put, having a tiger with a collar in front of you 
what is your message? That you own the tiger? That you own wilderness? What do you say if they say, oh, I j it just looks cool? I just... Yeah, and I, I don't disagree. I know, but that's not the point. The message is that you are taking away the dignity of this animal, you know? It used to be a wild animal, as you already took away freedom. But if you take away also the dignity, if it becomes a clown, you are taking away the very dignity of nature. The lack of respect towards nature is, is, is unbearable. All right, it's been great. Thank you so, so much. Oh. Oh.